go to Nigeria, which is, if not the most corrupt nation in Africa, and it is, it could be the most corrupt nation in the world, Minister Farrakhan. Oh, and now, Mr. Wallace. It is the most corrupt nation that I have ever covered. I've been there 25 years ago, and I've been there as recently as last year. Fine. So what? 35 years old. That's what that nation is. Now, here's America, 226 years old. You love democracy? But it, they're in Africa. You're trying to force these people into a system of government that you just have accepted 30 years ago, black folk got the right to vote. You're not in any moral position to tell anybody how corrupt they are. You should be quiet and let those of us who know our people go there and help them get out of that condition. But America should keep her mouth shut wherever there's a corrupt regime, as much hell as America has raised on the earth. No, I will not allow America or you, Mr. Wallace, to condemn them as the most corrupt nation on earth when you have spilled the blood of human beings. Has, has Nigeria dropped an atomic bomb and killed people in, in Hiroshima and Nagasaki? Have they killed all millions of Native Americans? How dare you put yourself in that position as a moral judge? I think you should keep quiet because with that much blood on America's hands, you have no right to speak. I will speak because I don't have that blood on my hand. Yes, there's corruption there. Yes, there's mismanagement of resources. Yes, there is abuse. There's abuse in every nation on earth, including this one. So let's not play holy to moralize on them. Let's help them. I'm not moralizing. I'm asking a question and I got an answer. Why would you put it as the most corrupt regime in the world? That doesn't make sense. Can you think me. of one more corrupt? Yeah, I'm living in one. I'm living in one. Yes, you've done a hell of a thing on this earth, so you should not be the one to talk. You should be quiet when it comes to moral condemnation. In my judgment. Second World War, there was an uprising by the Kikuyu people who wanted their land back. The Kikuyu were herded into concentration camps and fortified villages. Almost the entire population had over a million people. People were systematically tortured to death. They invented a new kind of pliers whose purpose was first to crush men's testicles and then to cut them off. They raped women with bayonets. They raped men. Similarly, a favorite technique was to ram sand up the rectum with a stick. Sometimes they were rolled up in barbed wire and kicked around the compound until they bled to death. Some of the British soldiers boasted about this. This is within living memory. The colonial secretary lied about it. The papers documenting it were burnt. The impact of the rich and powerful nations has been so phenomenally murderous and destructive that it has been completely airbrushed from our national consciousness. In order to justify the land-grabbing colonial projects, you had to create an ideology. We, the Europeans or the Americans, have come to rescue the rest of the world from its depravity and backwardness. But in order to do that, you have to be able to demonstrate that the rest of the world is depraved and backward. From this, arose the racism that is still with us today. It was a necessary component of the colonial project. Some people might claim, well, okay, we broke a few eggs to make this omelet. It's as if all those human beings were eggs. But look at the omelet. Isn't it fantastic? Look, we've made this fantastic omelet. Forget about all that unpleasant stuff and let's just celebrate where we are. 
where we are is a continuation of the project. We commodified people's land and people's labour and turned it into our property. We're also destroying the rest of the living world alongside it. We don't have to be like this. We are the same human beings as anybody else. We're all part of the same big human family. We just have to recognize that, accept that. And of course, within Western countries, there are plenty of brilliant people resisting colonization, both internal colonization within our own countries and external colonization of other people's countries.